Hey, I'm Jake. This is Loot. We make Pathfinder 2 videos. Continuing our Howl of the Wild series, this is Winged Warrior. I know, we'll do Claw Dancer. We will, I promise. Kitties. Winged Warrior Archetype. Nature provided wings to certain creatures to help them soar above predators or reach food hanging from tall trees or the side of a cliff. When those graced with wings no longer have to depend on flight for survival, their appendages can be turned to a different use. Combat. In addition to granting strategic elevation over foes, wings provide a variety of combat advantages. Like you always have a quill if you need one? Oh, combat advantages. Okay. Winged warriors are found independently among several ancestries. While awakened animals seem able to use these techniques as if by instinct, Tengu of the Inner Sea region are the most commonly seen practitioners of this fighting style. This makes sense to me. Naval and pirate crews in the Shackles particularly value a Tengu's skill at boarding actions. Warriors able to take flight, even temporarily, can often name their price when joining a crew on the Fever Sea. Despite the ranged armaments available on most ships, many sailors are hard-pressed to defend against skilled aerial assailants. Even those who develop wings later in life, like certain Cirques and those with grafted wings, can learn the fighting style of a winged warrior. Although it's a long path, many of the techniques involved are reinvented, rediscovered, and even updated by individual warriors. Winged Warrior Dedication Feet 2 Prerequisites You have permanent wings, such as from an ancestry or graft. Through rigorous training, you have strengthened your wings, granting you enough thrust to gain additional altitude. When you make a horizontal leap, increase the distance by 10 feet up to a maximum of your speed. Any fly speed granted by ancestry feats and other permanent wings increases by 5 feet. That's neat. So the awakened animal, the flight ancestry, starts with a flight speed of 15. You can only use it once per round and you have to land on solid footing, but this makes that 20. So that's neat. At second level, you have a fly speed once per round of 20 feet. And it, leaping always helps everybody, especially at level 2. You know, I've actually, I, my group at level 10 doesn't all have flight still, yet. So leaping is always going to be useful for most people. Level 4 feet, battering wings. Though not powerful enough for flight, your wings can deliver a thrashing to anyone who gets close. You gain a wing unarmed attack that deals 1d4 bludgeoning damage. Your wing attack is in the brawling group and has the agile finesse and unarmed traits. Okay, I am glad that that is an option and one I would never choose because it's just a natural attack. You can get that through Ancestry really freaking easily. Level 4 feet gusting spell, one action. It has the air, manipulate, and spell shape traits. You manipulate the currents of your spell's energy, allowing you to gracefully glide with your wings. If the next action you use is to cast a spell with the air or electricity trait, you can fly up to 10 feet before or after the spell is cast. That's neat for a 4th level feat. That extra movement is nice. Next level 4 feet, wing bounce, two actions. You rush forward, flapping your wings for a bit of lift, and can use that momentum to knock down a foe. Leap, and if you land within melee reach of, e of at least one enemy, you can attempt to trip that enemy. You don't need to have one hand free. If you successfully knock the target prone, you can leap again. If you have a fly speed, you can fly instead of leap. Think of how awesome this would look if you're just a ninja. Just somebody, like, leaping from building to building. Like, this is a Batman Daredevil archetype. Yeah, I know. You have to have wings. So what? Ignore that. For that kind of character concept, this is great. I think it's better than Vigilante. Vigilante. Number six feet, Sunbird Glare. One action. Requirements. You're in bright light. By keeping your feathers clean and sleek, you can catch the light across your wings to create a startling glare in the eyes of a creature within 20 feet. The target must succeed at a fortitude save against your class DC or be dazzled for one round, one minute on a critical failure. Regardless of the result, the target is temporarily immune to Sunbird Glare for 10 minutes. That's like a nice optional feat, Sunbird Glare. It's really not necessary. It's a minor benefit. If you take it, may as well use it in every fight. As long as you're in bright light. Which actually in my games isn't that often. In fact, in most games it isn't that often. Because you're always like inside a building or inside a castle or in a dungeon or underground or in the ocean or something. So I guess talk to your GM. See if that's going to be useful. Level 8 feet, Feathered Flechettes. 
two actions, frequency once per hour. Unfurling your wings in a quick snap, you send feathers scattering in all directions. Creatures in a 15-foot emanation take 6d6 slashing damage. Basic reflex save against your class DC. This increases to 10d6 if your unarmed attacks have a greater striking rune, such as by etching it on hand wraps or mighty blows and 16d6 if they have a major striking rune. This is built well. At level 8, once per hour, 6d6, that's really useful. That's a good feat. Next level 8 feat, pluck from the sky. Two actions, flourish. Access. Interesting. It is uncommon, so it has an access tag. Tango, Strix, or Awakened Animal, Flying Animal, Ancestry. Hmm. The skies are your rightful place. And, uh, uh, just to uh, be clear, uncommon means uh, that it's a little bit harder to get. If you are one of those that have access, it removes the uncommon trait, so it becomes common. So it's just like it removes any excuse you might need to make to your GM. The skies are your rightful place, and you will not suffer another to occupy them. Make a strike against a flying creature. If the attack deals damage, the target must attempt a reflex save against your class DC. Critical success, no effect. Success, the target falls 15 feet but doesn't take damage if it reaches the ground. Failure, the target falls 30 feet but doesn't take damage if it reaches the ground. Critical failure, as failure but the target takes falling damage. None of this requires that you actually be flying at the time. So I think this could be very useful. And it says make a strike against a flying creature. It doesn't say melee. You could use a crossbow. That is neat. Like, you know just where to shoot the wings to make them fall. Yeah, yeah, I like this. It's good. Next feat, level 8, wing shove. One action. Requirements, you're flanked by at least two enemies. Well, that sucks. Why would you want to put yourself in that situation? You spread your wings wide, pushing foes away from you. Attempt to shove one of the flanking enemies, and then make a second shove attempt against a different enemy that is flanking you. You don't need one hand free. The second shove attempt has the same multiple attack penalty as the first, and doesn't count toward your multiple attack penalty. On a success or critical success, you can't stride after a target, but that target is also off guard until the beginning of your next turn. Of their next turn. Sorry. On a critical failure, you're off guard until the beginning of your next turn instead of falling prone. Okay, well, that, that's good. I'm glad that you can't fall prone. Um, the target is also off guard until the beginning of their next turn. That's not just off guard to you. They're just off guard. So I guess this is good to help you get out of a fix and give yourself or one of your allies a bonus to hit your enemies, the, the flankers. So situationally, this is pretty cool. If you're not in that situation, it doesn't do anything. I don't like those. But if you have nothing else to take at level 8 for an archetype feat, like you have free archetype and this is the only archetype you have... Then may as well take it. It will be useful sometimes. And when it is, it'll look really freaking cool. Next level, uh, next feat, level 10. Falcon Swoop. Two actions, flourish. Requirements, you currently have a fly speed. So this is the first feat that requires that you actually have a fly speed. Like the fastest of predatory birds, you soar toward your prey at great speeds. Fly twice. At any point during this movement, you can make a strike against one enemy within reach or within the first range increment of a ranged weapon. That enemy is off guard against the strike if you're attacking them from above. That is really pointing out that you should be doing aerial combat at this point. Okay. That's very useful. As long as you have a fly speed. But like if you, you definitely can make a build for this. Falcon Swoop is very useful. I guess not many people are going to have a fly speed, but if you do have a fly speed and you've taken this archetype, why wouldn't you take this? This is going to be very effective a lot of the time. Again, there has to be room to fly. So talk to your GM, make sure that it's going to be useful. Next feat, level 10, redirecting draft. It's a reaction. Trigger, you or an ally within 10 feet of you is the target of a ranged physical strike. You flap your wings to blow arrows off course. You or the triggering ally gain a plus two circumstance bonus to AC against the triggering attack. If the attack misses, you redirect the attack's flight path. I guess that just means you miss. Not sure why they phrased it that way. But okay, cool. I'm picturing that and it's a really cool image. Like you and your ally are trying to, I don't know, take, take down this ninja because ninjas are on my mind now. 
and they're like throwing knives at you and you just wave your arms essentially your wings and deflect the projectile that's cool next feat level 12 smooth hover free action frequency once per hour trigger your airborne at the end of your turn you remain airborne through sheer effort you don't fall even if you didn't use fly or a similar action this turn it's just useful you're gonna take this at 12th level because this helps you fly and saves you actions it's good next feat level 12 thunderous landing one action requirements you currently have a fly speed and are airborne you hurl away enemies with the force of your landing. You fly, and if you end your movement on a solid surface, your landing sends out a shockwave of air. Each creature within 10 feet of your landing position must succeed at a reflex save against your class DC or be pushed 10 feet away. This is forced movement. I like this. Very cool. Also, what an entry. It's a nice entrance. Uh, next feat, level 14, bombing run, two actions, requirements, you currently have a fly speed. Using your elevation and speed to your advantage, you deliver aerial payloads with greater force. You fly and can interact to draw a bomb. At any point during your movement, you can also make a strike with an alchemical bomb. The bomb deals its splash damage to every creature within 10 feet of the target. Keep in mind, this doesn't mean that you have to be an alchemist. You just have to own bombs. Bombs can be purchased. Or, you know, handed to you by the group's alchemist. Or I guess you could take the alchemy archetype. And bombs have a variety of purposes. Like, you can fly, pull out a glue bomb, and then make a strike with it with two actions. And it does splash damage to every creature within 10 feet, not 5. I like this. This, again, requires a specific kind of build or a kind of play style. It's not always going to be useful because, like, if you're in a cave, you can't do this. But I like it a lot. I think so much of this would be very useful if your adventures were outdoors, especially in bright light. And I might ask the GM at the outset, hey, my, my build, my archetype really requires that I have a lot of space to fly. And it'd be best if it were out of doors and in bright light. Is that something that I'll find useful making this archetype? And, you know, it might not be. But you do need to have that, have that conversation because there are certain things this really requires. Otherwise, you might get, get, get kind of bored and dissatisfied with this archetype. Anyway, next feat, level 14, cratering drop. I pictured dropping cupcakes because I saw catering drop. No, it's cratering drop. One action. Prerequisites. Pluck from the skies. Requirements. Your previous action was plucked from the skies, and the target failed or critically failed their saving throw. You follow up your enemy's fall, driving you both to the earth in a meteoric descent. You fly straight down, increasing the amount the enemy falls by your fly speed. If you reach the ground, you drive the enemy into the ground, dealing double the normal falling damage. That's cool. Oh, I like that. That's like the best thing I could think of for a flying archetype. Well, maybe I shouldn't speak so soon. There's another feat left. Level 16 feet, Sonic Strafe, two actions. Air and Sonic traits. Frequency once per hour, requirements, you currently have a fly speed. You can now achieve such flight speeds that your passage splits the very air. Fly twice. Any creature that is adjacent to you at any point during your movement takes 10d6 Sonic damage Basic fortitude save against your class DC. On a critical failure, the creature is also deafened for one hour. Sonic boom. You make a sonic boom. All right, I gotta say, this isn't gonna work for everybody in every campaign. But gotta be fun if it does! I think I would actually rearrange my campaign to make this work for a player. Because it seems like it'd be so much fun. Like, this is very cinematic. It, it's very anime to me. Like, picking up an enemy and then cra uh, smashing them into the ground. Just so cool. So there are, like, a few different themes I could think of. One of them is that you just are really good against flying creatures. Like, the pluck from the sky ability of, like, making them fall from range if you want. Another one is you're basically a martial artist vigilante. And you have some of these abilities that are very ninja-like, like feathered fleshettes. That, you, that could just be a bunch of darts or daggers that you throw in all directions once per hour. 
and then there's just you're a giant fucking bird. This this is actually good. I I thought this was kind of crap because it doesn't give you a fly speed. And it seems like it should because it's winged warrior, but it's about using your wings to beat the fuck out of your enemy. Just like pummeling them with feathers. It doesn't make sense to me. It's not the right image in my head. But I do like it for what it is. It might not give a fly speed, but you can get that a variety of different ways if you want to. And it does end up being a very fun play style at later levels. That's neat. Yeah, yeah, I like it. Yeah, yeah, it's a good feel. Thank you for watching. Uh, if you're a patron, thank you for being here all the time. I appreciate you guys. Um, this month's patron giveaway is going to be the blue dice bag. Right here. Dragon scale bag. It, it won't actually have dice in it. That's for other months. Or for, you know, buy some dice. Just, just go buy some dice. Or you could sign up for the highest level of patron. And we're just going to give you some dice every month because that's what we do. Hi. Anyway, if you want to check out Patreon down below, the link for this book is also down below. And also the link for Discord. Just come on in and chat with us. Give me your ideas on what you would make with this archetype. It seems like it can go so many different directions. It's not just, I fly and hurt people while flying. It's very interesting. Anyway, the rest of the videos for The Howl of the Wild are here. The videos for my archetype, the, the playlist for my uh, archetype videos is here. And Loot wishes you well. And and he's like owning my arm now, so I have to go feed him and I'm gonna go do that. Baby kitty teeth, yes, you kitty. Oops, okay, bye.